Alrighty. Been a few days since uh, I last streamed this, and I'm gonna be making it through tonight's stream using a combination of uh, a combination of liquids and cough drops. Hoping I can get through this without too much coughing. So, um, when last we left our feckless group of adventurers, our daring duo. They were busy walking around the boardwalk looking at this uh, which we'll call it sign here. Bell the Electrical R&D. So we'll pick up from there and let's see what they're up to today. What have we got? Hmm. We were looking for somebody's coat and he was actually going to leave it around here I believe or had possibly left it around here. What have we got here? We have a research bonus. Hard move, temporary, minus one savoir fair. It really hurts to punch this armor. Oh, this is the armor research we were doing. Wait, we are doing. Never mind. Two hours and 16 minutes removing, remaining. Let's do that one. Then we have a couple more we can do here. And then I think we actually have to... We actually have to delete some of these and retrain something else. Well, judging by things which I know about and which can be trained and the things which I know about which uh, I do not know about but are listed on here. I guess I'm about not even 50% through the game yet. Hmm, fun times. Alrighty. What do we got? Mysterious stuff. Got the gloves, got the shoes. I am so going to beat that cure ass or whatever out of that guy. Okay. Let's find out what's going on. Place to get up here. Stair. So if I can make it into this building, there's a stairway up to the top. Interesting. Okay. What's this? Someone has left an unidentifiable, unidentifiable article. Ah. Can I talk tonight? Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. Take a closer look. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests there might be a jacket underneath this crust of filth. Seems logically, seems likely that it was left in the surf until someone laid it out on this bench to dry out. Unfortunately, that just seems to have stiffened it into a shapeless mass. Please tell me that you're not taking that with you. I think this is the jacket the idiot Doom Spiral guy wanted me to find. Lieutenant looks at the stinking rag and sniffs. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to have it returned. Alright. Take it. You. So that's in my inventory somewhere. Can't get that thought out of my head. Coin operated weighing machine. What's this? Tarp. Glasses. Prescription lenses. What do you do with those? Plus two encyclopedia. Uh oh, what do you know? Alrighty then. Let's do that. this? And he's having a thought. That tarp will keep out neither rain nor snow nor wind. and empty. Moonshine, probably. Smells like tasty fermentation. Perception, the smell. It's awful and familiar. Hold on. That is awful. It doesn't help. You can still smell it. What is it? 
Don't you recognize it? That hideous pungency? That faintly cloying sweetness? Oh, only death smells like that. Half light. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. Heads up, Lieutenant. Something's not right here. Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. Hmm. Oh, more thoughts. Careful there, these floorboards look rotten and weak. Trash can, there's some tear. Tear? An empty cigarette package and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Two empty bottles of Tulula vodka. Tulula vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you can find. Perception. No, there's more in there. Levis strawberry liquor, plus some Pilsner bottles, too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. Lieutenant looks in the can, eyes watering from the smell. Examine the cigarette package. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Examine the kebab wrapper. You can see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads Shish Kebab Revishal. Visual calculus. It's no older than a day or two. No mold yet. Perception. Smell. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. The smell must be from this guy. <coughs> Working class corpse. A man lies on the boardwalk. His limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Physical instrument. Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the left leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. Perception. The smell is not as bad as a two-weeks-old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. Lieutenant squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging eyes stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, he's been dead for two days, no longer. He stands up and shivers as a gust of wind blows through his bomber jacket. We need to investigate. Authority. Another dead body. Hmm, this is your job. Steal yourself. Composure. Calm now, carefully. Just another day, just another dead body. Breathe. Study the man's clothes. He's wearing mud-caked boots. Beige trousers and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. Bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. Hmm. Search his pockets. Ah, folded library card. You find some sunflower seeds <clears throat> and a rain-soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Hmm. Kim Kitsuragi. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. Thank you for the leading hint there, NPC fellow of mine. Study the man. Nope. Study the surroundings. Hmm. There's some dried blood on the metal bench right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Examine the chewing gum wrapper. Robowski. Spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. Look in. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too. Confirmed. Nearly the whole pack is there. Solidified on his lower rear teeth. Hmm. Hmm. He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, the man shudders from the cold. I've seen it before, almost the same scenario. Even the chewing gum, it's always the same. Examine the man's head. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head, an open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. This is what killed him. Hmm. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? It's, um, hard to say. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. Examine the bottle. 
A three-quarter liter to Lula vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. Electrochemistry. It's mid-market spirits. With a slight touch of menthol, the man meant to enjoy himself, have a good time. Hmm. Tear all around us. He looks at two other bottles near the coin-operated viewer, then at your yellow plastic bag. I prefer that you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. <clears throat> Inland Empire. True. It feels disrespectful. Um, do I want to step on the floorboards? Not really. Step back. Study the man himself. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Study the man himself. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still tangling. I think they mean dangling through the hole. Hmm. Electrochemistry weighs in. You have to be quite inebriated to fall that bad. 40 G... 40 grams? 40... what? 40 G of pure alcohol. Three bottles of wine or one and a half of spirits? Logic. Or maybe it was just dark. Examine his face. His expression is dull like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes empty and wide look frightening in their frozen gaze. Hmm. Visual calculus. Height, 170, 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build. Age, approximately 50 to 60 years. Logic again. That's what the chewing gum seems to point to as well. What? That doesn't have anything to do. Age? Chewing gum? What? Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. He looks south the way you came. Hmm. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? Electrochemistry. At least this man knew how to party. Imagine the same scene without the bottle. That would be just sad. Inland Empire. This is an omen, a sign from above. Don't start drinking again. Hmm. He looks like me. I could have ended up just like him, dead on some empty boardwalk of the bottle next to my corpse. Well, at least you're not married. Kim points to the ring on the man's left hand, the flesh around it, swollen and gray. <coughs> In the Empire. Or what if you are? Kim Kutsuragi. But let's not try to run ahead. For all, for now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. What do you think happened here? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it hadn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Hmm. Do you think he was drunk? point to the bottle. Oh, yes, the lieutenant nods. What about alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior, but I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. Could it be related to the lynching? No. I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's just treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident unrelated to the murder case. Logic. Agreed. If this somehow converges later, why not? But keep it simple for now. But what about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab, he shrugs. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the box. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. Kim Katsuragi, they'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. 
All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. He smiles sourly. Right. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure, though there's still the question of identifying the body. What should we do with him? Well, from where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. Hmm. What about field autopsy? A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal, and this looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma to the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. Well, uh, yes, but isn't that kind of sloppy? Maybe, but we don't really have that much time or resources to spare. The guys at the processing will take care of the rest. I still need some time to decide, uh, well, I don't know. We could either return and take this case later, take it now. I don't want to leave it for the station. I don't want that option. So option two or option four. Hmm. We found him. We should finish this. Let's take the case. Hmm. All right. We should first examine that library card you found. Then we can call the station from my Kinema. Let them know we're taking the case. All right. Leave. Um, interact with something. The coat, filthy jacket, you. Hmm. How did this jacket get so disgusting? It's a sordid and filthy tale, not for the weak. Are you sure you can summon it? Think about it. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. Perception. Smell. It smells like a dead sea creature, tangled in gray strands of seaweed. He must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. Gross. Why? Why did you think about it? Look at your hands. They're covered in muck. Maybe if I wipe my hands on my pants? Oh, for crap's sake. Really? What? No. Then it'll just be on your pants. It's a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. Hmm. Folded library card. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central Jamrock Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejian, Mejian, expires July 53. Logic. Billy is a unisex name. Could be the deceased or his family member. Look inside. Hmm. Whoever owns his card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. Last one on the list is The Glinting Curve by M. Thibault. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Conceptualization. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers, too. Look at the backside. Hmm. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005 or visit us at Murrow Street 78, Jamrock. Business hours... 9 to 18. I was right in the middle of that now. Hmm. Ken Kutragi. Good. Takes a note. If we should give them a call from my Kanima, we should give them a call from my Kanima. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mijan. Put it away. Hmm. We got some. Hmm. Dead body. What do we got? Coin operated viewer has been out of order for years. Stop messing with the coin viewer and hold on to something. The wind is so strong. Yes?
doesn't seem to be working. What's this? Take all. Got some bottles. Alright. money here. Ironic in a way. And this? What is that? These rusty gears used to turn the whole machine. The building before you housed the engine must have been a big one. And on top, the chain trails off into the ocean to who knows where. And there's a door. Hmm. Door unopenable. An old door worn by elements guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. What is this thing anyway? It's military, a service depot of some sort. Used to service what? The washerwoman mentioned a depot up the coast. The lieutenant looks at the hunching concrete toad in front of him. She said it was for moving ammo and cargo across the bay. This might be it visual calculus. A success. It may have been used to service an aerostatic battleship in the atmosphere or a fortification like a sea fort in the bay. Hmm. Okay. Walk away. This cannot be retried. Ooh. We walk away. What's this? Barrel's been recently discarded. Still smells of fuel oil. Trap. Let's check that. Try, oh, there's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Look around. The reeds shake sadly in the coastal breeze. Snow specks the stalks. Most of it melts quickly. The reeds seem to be waiting for something. Shivers. The wind picks up here, near the cape's end. Surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. Reach for the trap. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise, Lieutenant grins mirthlessly. Anyway, one down, three to go. Hmm. Say nothing, just put the trap down. Leave. Hmm. <coughs> what do we have? Pick the traps. Got one down. Okay. Stuff over here. The cigarette butts cleaned away under a rock. Brand Tu Mutiri. What's he thinking? You take a mental note. Tu Mutiri seems important somehow. That's. Someone's made a campfire here a long time ago. A rusted broken control box for the radio relay tower. Box over here. Interesting. Take all. A uh, scented scarf. Tiny inlets there off in the far distance where the posts trail. Alright, what's this? This ladder is too rusty to climb. The sea air is eating away at it. He's had no thought. This relay tower coordinates. Cor this relay tower coordinates boat traffic in the bay. Barely. Let's put a save game in here because this seems like an appropriate spot. of something. 
happened there. Switch gears and go back to this church. I think I missed something the first time around. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do we got in this church now? What is out here anyway? Anything? window. Still has letters on it, too. The silence in this part of the church, it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait, I think I still hear something. Perception. And then it's gone. Almost all of it, but for the faintest of hums. Logic. It seems that sound here is detached from its source somehow, if not blotted out right. Truly unusual. Hmm. You can hardly hear your own breathing. Um, stomp your feet, clap your hands. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total somehow. Yell as loud as you can. Perception. Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. Turn to Kim. What's happening? Lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Hmm. Can you hear anything? Um, almost nothing, and it's beginning to worry me. The church just has strange acoustics, some engineering trick. Hmm. Maybe the church was designed in this way to prevent boisterous activity, singing and dancing on its premises. Hmm. Well... Maybe they wanted us, maybe they wanted to discourage singing and dancing. Hmm? Could be. Hmm. He doesn't seem entirely convinced, though. Look up into the bell tower. Perception sight. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. Perception. Red check cannot be retried, but I have 92%. Oh, yes, I got it. Woohoo. What do we got? Mm-hmm. What are we looking at here? Steam? What? It's like there's something moving up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and is making its way toward you through all the other shadows. Follow the shadow's movements. 
It's not a shadow anymore, it's becoming more substantial as it gets closer. The shape of a animal descends. Hmm. Officer, is there something up there? Lieutenant follows your gaze, attempting to see whatever it is that you're seeing. Hmm. Oh no, you lost sight of it. Where did it go? On the ceiling? Yes, the darkness makes the ceiling feel infinitely far away. Blink. Okay, what just happened? Huh. Oh, who is this? You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Hmm. Maybe it's possible to talk to it? Somebody up there. Huh? The shadow is a man, but a man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. He is studying you intently. Hmm. The crab man. Say nothing. Be quiet for now. The man leans forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. I bet your alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, home. But don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right. You've come to the right place. Uh huh. The right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of the bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? Esprit de corps. I'm put off by this religious stuff, he thinks. And maybe the ceiling climbing, too. It's all very hard to square with the lieutenant's own view of reality. Electrochemistry. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Sheesh. Hmm. Well, yeah, I guess I have a bit of a problem, and it's been getting out of hand lately, but... This does good, eh? I see deep inside you. Your body and spirit are suffering greatly from overindulgence, and you don't even know it. Oh, I'm very in touch with my suffering. Not all of it. I was like you once. You don't know all the havoc every know is wreaking on your mind and your spirit. Necesitas parar, homie. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. <laughs> okay, Kim, thanks. Look at these crazies. What is this shit? Hmm. For some reason, I feel like you have a point there. Don't trust me. Trust the motor. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. His voice echoes in the cold air of the church. This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. Hmm. He sways gently on the beams, waiting for you to take it all in. You have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Is he just trying to throw you off your game? A drama. Tis not an act, my liege, saving perchance he hath deceived his very self. This man is a zealot. Hmm. Do you know where the other spooker is? Other spooker? Oh, esa vieta muy estudiosa, he, he laughs. Dunno, Holmes. Vieta is grandma? No, grandma is abuela. Wait. So there is another, there is another person living in the church, and it's a Villayeta? Villayeta? No, oh, I just call her Villayeta because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. He scratches his head. Oh, maybe not that young. Age is just one of the many masks we wear. And you don't know where she is? That's what I said, Holmes. How can you not know that when you both live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on a computer now and then. We've got different interests. So you've got nothing else to tell me. How she looks, what she does, who is she? I'm afraid not, Essay. You'll just have to wait till she comes back, or... He shrugs. Or search through her radio computer. Have you by chance, uh... <clears throat> have you by any chance heard the Via Yeta? Via... Via Yeta? Via Yeta? What the hell kind of word is that? Via Yeta? Say the password to her radio computer? Too many times, Essay. You need it for something. Survey. Are a good way to fish for personal information, especially in the name of public safety. Hmm. Um. 
Yes, it's for a first-degree murder investigation at Martinez. Lieutenant raises his eyebrow but doesn't say anything. Don't sweat it, Vato. The password is afterlife death. What do you think of that? Makes me almost pity. La nihilista pequeña when I hear it. You must be the crab man. Never know myself to be a crab, but if that's the name you've got for me, I won't stop you from using it. To be fair, it's really more like a spider. He considers this for a moment. I always thought of myself more like a flame, flickering along the rafters and beams. He pauses. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. Logic. That's not the only technique he's working on. Look at those carved sculptures. And is that a satchel of tools over there? Wait, did you also carve all those sculptures? Ah, sure am. Whittling wood used to be something I just did to busy my hands. Now I use those same hands in service of something greater than my own restlessness. Huh. Well, you've got some nice um, curves going there. It's all just for the mother, man. No need to overthink it. What were you before you became a crab man and a woodcarver? I was in a gang, way, but my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. I lost my memory too, and it haunts me. He looks like he wants to pat you on the back. No, man, you gotta let that shit go. Then the mother's light touch will fill you with rapture. Do you remember your name, sir? <laughs> Authority success. The lieutenant is not particularly interested in this information. He's just trying to assert some control over the conversation. Tiago is my name, but those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, <clears throat> so to speak, your place among your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. Um, well, my name's Harry. Extend your hand for a greeting. It's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. He ignores your hand, his limbs are mere shadow below the ceiling. Hmm. Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. The ones in the tent outside, right? I seen them. Guessing they're the ones who call me a crab? Probably scared of me. So, what do you think about the nightclub, that is? Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there, imbibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Might even be nice to have some company. What are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness, he nods towards the ceiling. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. I circle it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'll be pure enough to drink from it directly. <coughs> um, are these yours? Showing the scarf and shoes you found lying around. I think they were a long time ago, he looks at the red clothing items. I had to shed them like skins to get closer to the center of silence. You can have them. I don't need them anymore. One second. Okay, back again. Uh, this mother of silence? You mean her? Point to the window. No, 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 no. There's a new god in town. And she can't be painted or sculpted because she has no limbs or even a face. She is the end. She has a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes, and no one ever will. What will happen once you drink from this perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed finally at one with the state of the world before reality began. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? You know a thing or two about that, a thing or a few. Um, are you sure you didn't just switch one drug for another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Drama. Too gleeful, those words. He is lying. Not to you, to his very own self. Um, I was being insensitive. Sorry, let's move on. No worries, man. I know this shit takes time. I still don't understand what you're doing in the church. I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. 
Um, okay, singing is good. We should all sing a bit more. He laughs. I don't mean literal singing, Holmes. This is the mother of silence we're talking about. It's the singing of a burning heart. You may be thinking, but fire crackles. No, Holmes, that's the material that's burning. The flames themselves are without sound. Uh, actually, he's right on that one. How did you even find this place, this church? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work up here back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, eh? It didn't belong to me. Right. I had other questions. Hmm. This sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams blending into the shadows. You've been here a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back, he responds, his voice suddenly flat. Did you witness it? No, not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Okay, then. Thanks. Hmm. I think we're done here, I say. The figure crawls off into the darkness above. That was an interesting conversation. Apologies for my listeners. My voice is a bit congested. But at least I'm not coughing. Uh, hopefully not too much on the on the recording. Hmm. However, Kim continues, I'm still not sure how it's relevant to our investigation. Hmm. Well, it's relevant, because I'm going to do save. Let's go over here and see if we can break into this computer now that we have the passcode. I want to be a passcode. Hmm. Press play again. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Hmm. That's fun. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon, Fortress Accident on Saint Brunoon. Saint Brunoon, this is the East Insel Indian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? Hmm. Let's try this again. I think I may have the right password for the personal log. Good. Please repeat the password. After life, death. Good. I've unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Hmm. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Fortress accident. Like the one in the doomed commercial area? I have two machines registered to this company, name in Martinez. One in Saint Brune, the other one on Rue de Saint Gislain. Saint Brune. That's the church. Lieutenant gestures around him. And Rue de Saint Gislain. That's the doomed commercial area. Hmm. Anything else I can help you with? What are you, a machine? Or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Now please repeat. Is this the personal log? Lieutenant whispers into your ear. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Hmm. Yvonne. My partner here tells me that you're here because those radio computer guys are all paranoid. They're merely cautious, says the old lady. It's my job to protect the filaments as a password repeater at the East Insel Indian Station. Now please tell me why you're calling Fortress Accident. Ah, uh, thanks, but I've finished with this call. Goodbye, Fortress Accident, she says as her voice disappears into a whirl of static. Hmm. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing virescent play and print buttons. Let's press print. The printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. Uh, okay, read the printout. Hmm. The first entry, made on the 4th of February, 51, by an unknown author, is short and concise. Arrived at the church. The door was boarded up, so I used a crowbar to get inside. Looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of the ordinary, but I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get the electricity in. 
him. The lieutenant leans closer, sc scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, muttering under his breath, Fourth of February? That's over a month ago. Whoever set these machines has been here. Who set up these ma Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Hmm. Do you think this log might be connected to the case? Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local... His eyes wander to the various machines around him. Eccentric? Hmm. Read the second entry. 6 Feb 51. Had a little chat with a local fisherman. Said I shouldn't go near the place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. Hmm. What was that about narcotics? This could prove to be interesting. Hmm. Wait. Narcotics? I doubt that we can find any. It's just idle fisherman's gossip to scare away the kids. He looks at the stained glass window. Hmm. Nothing spooky about this place either. It's just abandoned and cold in an awful and in an awful part of town. Then why doth the lieutenant protest against spending time here so often? Read the third entry. 7th Feb 51. Finally got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esker series, something advanced. Why would she need an antenna? Hmm. Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? He steps on a wire running on the ground, inspecting it with his boot. For setting up her radio computer. Read the fourth entry. 8th Feb 51. Bought the antenna. Had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers. Authority. Artists yet again. Harassing citizens. Stealing badges. Occupying public spaces with installations like the one here. Hmm. But at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads, the programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers, though, they're fucked. I just have to figure out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup when the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. Hmm. Our data loss? Seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Hmm. Something about the backup data getting destroyed and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. He adjusts his glasses. Let's just keep reading. Artists? Programmers? Lexi? Who are all these people? I think these people worked in the radio computer games business. The one we saw in the doomed commercial area. They must be her former co-workers. Hmm. Read the fifth entry. 12th Feb 51. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. The strike. He strokes his chin. We're nearing the date of the murder. Hmm. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what's that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. Read the sixth entry. 25th Feb 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel now for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment. But I did discover a curious audio spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some mics. Hmm. Is she talking about? Lieutenant looks to his right toward the silence. Read the seventh entry. 28th Feb 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the Swallow is real and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence, or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. Hmm. 
the pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? But what could it be? Look at the water basins. Lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. Read the eighth entry. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music, one neo-disco song over and over again. Fortunately, the song is mon so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say hello, she got scared and left. Good. I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. Reaction speed. That disco man must be a cell. She must be describing a cell. The girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. Read the ninth entry. March 51. I got a call from the repeater station. Someone has tried to access the radio computer in our old office in Martinez. Can't do anything about it. Storekeeper still doesn't want to let me inside the building. Thinks I'm part of some kind of curse. How Martinez of her. Hmm. That's me. I was the one who broke into that radio computer. And the storekeeper must be Plaisance. I knew it wasn't a good idea to meddle with that machine. Interfacing. No, no. It was a great idea. You're learning things. This is how you learn things about machines. Ah, read the 10th entry. March 51. A new 2-meter auxiliary cable, noodles, crackers, ping-ping energy drinks, water, toothpaste, gum, also some canned air. The reading is interrupted by the sound of the church door opening. Suna, the programmer. A strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. That is. Breaking into my radio computer, I see. Hmm. She glares at you. She holds out the off button for several seconds. The machine reboots. Yes, you are breaking it. But not into her radio computer. You're a master circuit vendor. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCN, you see. Hmm. I can assure you... <laughs> military data links. I have no clue what that's talking about. Um, let's see. We're here on a side case representing certain music venue organizers. Well, you won't find any music venue organizers here. She rarely looks up from the keyboard. You hear the machine whirl back to life. It is me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now, please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed any- We should talk to her, after she has rebooted the machine. Scarf. Hmm. Now, do we just wait for this part, or can we talk to the lady? Let's try this. What is it? <clears throat> Um, I didn't break anything, did I? No, you just printed out my personal lock and wasted some paper. Um... Hi, are you the lead programmer? We're all untethered by any chance? Yes. Or no, not anymore. That project is dead. Empathy. She doesn't seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she straightens her back. Sorry, but who are you? What are I you doing here? I have thrown a look and killed the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. 
I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis language. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how can I help you. Hmm. Did she say over 16 years of experience? She must have started programming when she was still a teenager. Have you seen the crab man? No. But you know he's around. Yes. He's seen you. And... And okay, it's probably not a big deal then. No, you're right. I'm not. Her voice trails off as she bends over to tinker with the machine's printer. Why are there so many machines in this place? I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. Why do you need an antenna? I use the AR1 as my Reem Prefect's processing unit. Reem Prefect, that's your computer, right? Mm hmm. And that antenna is its processing unit? Yes, she sighs. You really don't know anything about radio computers, do you? She has stopped working now. Um, uh, I know a little. All right, well, all radio computers perform operations up on air, so in order to gain more processing power, you need to invest in a good antenna. Um, what's on air? On the front, the unified front of radio waves, licensed and controlled by Lintel in the East Insulindic region. It's all around us, she waves her hand. That's what on air means. Like love. Conceptualization chimes in. Huh. And the AR1, is it a good antenna? She stops to think. I guess it is. So far I've been quite satisfied with it. Martinez is an unstable region with bad coverage, and the operation has been surprisingly stable. But it's not the cheapest one on the market, so I wouldn't recommend it for your regular red tape operations. Frasier 1000 is a foolproof line for civilians. Anyway, she turns back to her terminal. You should do some research before you decide to buy anything. Ask around. Compare the prices. There are many milieus devote, dedicated to that sort of thing. <coughs> what are you doing with your radio computer? I'm working. Hmm. The machine seems almost alien with its pulsing core, the light casting her face in a strange shadow. Working on what? Could you... She closes her eyes. Could you just... Shh. For a moment. Or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. It's not just rudeness. It really is hard to concentrate on whatever she needs to do, and you're not helping. Uh, what about those bowls of water over there? They are connected to my Reem Prefect. She looks up. Whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? Thanks. Short and terse. There you have it. Whatever she's using them for, they're hers. Right? I'll try not to touch anything. Next question. What are you doing in an abandoned church? You really like these questions, don't you? There's a hint of amusement in tired eyes. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm a police officer. It's my job to ask questions. I am conducting a scientific research here. You can't throw me out, she says, ready to stand her ground. What research? I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Wait, what? She's looking for disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. Lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is the hole connected to the data loss in your journal? Yes, that's what led me here. She stares at the burnished antenna on a nearby table. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. A hole in the world, what does that mean exactly? Exactly, what does it mean? There's something frantic about her as she locks her gaze with you, eyes shining like pearls. Up to now it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. Here. Um, <clears throat> What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She's suddenly absorbed in the conversation, waiting for your answer. Logic. Easy. Measured by the world around it. Um, you measure by collecting data on its surroundings, on that which exists. Exactly, she nods. Very true. That's what I've been aiming for. That's why I have those basins. I've tried using hydrotransducers to record the silence to find out where it begins. 
but honestly, it's not progressing very well. She grows silent, staring at her circle of basins. It looks like some ancient ritual. Um, do you have any idea where this hole might be located? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. She looks up, eyes trying to pierce the pitch black heights above, but without much success. Perception. Only a faint crisscross of rafters can be made out from the dark, most of the tower disappearing into the shade. Strange things may flourish in the dark. Why there? <coughs> There's this place at the back of the church, a place where all audible vibrations seem to disease. I've named it the Swallow, and the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence. Are you sure it's not done just an architectural quirk? Maybe, but it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. This is where the Crab Man lives. I know. You don't think the crab man might be somehow responsible here? No, I don't. <sighs> okay, you said the research isn't going well. Why not? Because it's just trial and error trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... She stops mid-sentence. You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. Okay, that's all I want to know about the scary 2 millimeter hole in the world for now. Great, her hands are whirl on the keyboard. Thanks. Um... How do you feel about a Nordic dance music? What? She squints her eyes. I hate it. I bet she hasn't even heard it. Um, okay, well, that was quick. Why do you hate it? Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it, but to a sober mind, it just sounds like uninspired rug whipping. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Right, right, but how do you feel about a club for a Nordic dance music? This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? <clears throat> she looks up, shaking her head. <coughs> I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. What do they want to build, then? Take a guess, why don't you? Mm, I heard they're also planning on building a drug lab. Bingo, she snaps her fingers. That's exactly what they're up to. Wonderful, Lieutenant whispers, admiring the embellished pillars and the spectacular architecture in the church. Now, this house of worship is also going to be a drug lab. Always something fascinating happening in tents. I say nothing. So that's settled. Great. She supports her chin on her hand, visibly pleased. No nightclubs in the church, then. Mm, about the two millimeter hole again. The swallow, you mean. What about it? Okay, I don't have any more information on that. Uh, right, I'll let you work in peace now. Gotta do. Help Raver start a nightclub. They are not keen on that idea. Okay. Close. True. Hard. Full. Core. Hardcore. Yeah. Uh, 
This young man adds a capital G before the H in his Yars and Ars. This produces a guttural Gottwaldian accent that makes him sound more animal, more in it. Or maybe it's just not Gottwaldian, maybe it's Oranis. Perhaps an homage to Orania, where Arno Van Eyck is from, judging by his name. Could you be listening to an Arno Van Eyck creation right now? So this is the famous Van Eyck I'm hearing? You know about him? He moves his mouth, but sound doesn't come out. His eyes are the size of saucers. Looks like he rendered him speechless. You know Van Eyck? Yeah, your friend of Sel mentioned him. Good, good. The Advent? Okay, what just happened? Big clothes. True, hard, full car. Is it? It's hard car. Skip a D, skip a danger. I am the. Close. True, hard, f hardcore, hardcore to the mega. Here comes the night. Be close. True, hard, f hardcore, hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. Good morning, yeah. One, two, three. Echo Qatar, the place to be. Echo Qatar. The Be close. True, hard, hardcore. Hard caught as a mega, internally coherent. All core, all right, yeah. Hard core, ah. Is it though? One mind, one spirit. There's no other world. Oh yeah, I got nothing. This guy's an idiot. <laughs> I see you're here again, offside man. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? I'm here to talk about the church camp. Yeah. I talked to the crab man. Oh man, who is he? What did you think? Seemed okay, to be honest. Very spiritual. Really? Huh, interesting. What's he doing in the church? Um, Just preaching and praying from the looks of it. No matter, the paranoid young man mumbles gruffly. Is he going to be a problem? Yeah, no, he is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing to do. Um, he keeps himself physically active, thinks spiritual thoughts, and doesn't drink. Who am I to evict such a person? But he's likely up to no good, Andre shakes his head. He's a crab man, man. A menace to society. I doubt that. Besides, I'm pretty sure it's impossible to catch him climbing up there. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? He rubs his jaw. A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice, friendly hyper time? Don't really. I don't really. I don't think he really gives a damn about you or anyone else. I guess it's not a massive problem now that I think of it. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light. Yuck! Maybe, uh, I guess we'll figure something out. But <clears throat> about the other spooker, the one in Grandma's clothes, did you see her? Yes, I was using the mainframe when Suna, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident, appeared. A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? She did not like the anodic dance club idea. What a pity. That's my favorite thing in the world. Drops a hammer back into a toolbox. She doesn't like it at all. A shame, he sighs. What can we do now? Do you find out what can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam and into a laser lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! She made it very clear that she won't leave until her own project is finished. And you can't just evict her? No, I won't evict her. We have to come up with a different solution. Look at you, honor man. No, no, he's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. <coughs> I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. Lines in the dark exist. Coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's hard. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? She, hmm. She absolutely does not. Really, truly despises it. 
AK cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment, but then he returns to the full swing of it. No worries, we'll figure it out. The man nods enthusiastically, then leans in and whispers, If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If, if it's all okay with you, what do you think? Hmm. Perhaps if you drop the drug lab, it might make it easier to convince her. He looks around in the tent. Oh, man. But the drug lab was like an integral part of getting the club going. For me, it was my favorite part. Chemistry is great. Besides, imagine all the drugs we could do if we had our own drug lab. I mean, anodic music is great and all, but drugs, they make you feel really good. When did you last feel really, really good? Electrochemistry. <sighs> Excitement bubbles up in you. Maybe you should blast some of these drugs right here in this tent. I don't have time to feel good. I'm a very busy officer of the law. <coughs> Pull out that stick, law man. You'd absolutely love drugs. They'll make you feel transcendent. I am so stuffed up. Um, I refuse to throw her out, but I can try convincing her. Ah, excellent. Good luck. Goodbye, officer. about this music place you've been playing in the church. It's supposed to become like a club for anodic dance music, like that new style of synthesizer stuff they play at the Palisium. Except that, yeah. She looks at the old wooden church up on the poles. As a mean wind comes bellowing in, the six-story structure lets out a dole for shriek. Um, okay, enough about the church then. I had another question. Um, the others told me you went inside the church. What did you see in there? Well, that, you're not going to believe me. There's no point in me telling you. You're right. Um, okay, she's less prone to blurting out Crab Man than the others. We'll see. Go ahead and tell me. Okay, I went and saw a woman next to those machines there. Noid calls it a mainframe. She was dressed like someone who was being raised by their grandmother, you know? Strange old clothes. Had this absent expression. Didn't say anything. Just stood still. Okay, that's not especially frightening. And then, you know, right behind her, a man crawled down the wall, upside down like a crab, down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. He stopped right before he got to the floor, then just hung there like that, looking at me, right at me. I fucking turned around and walked out. End of story. Like a crab, you say? I saw him. I saw the crab man. He saw him. Does it mean that you went in there? Did you see the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? I did see them both, yes. Good, so you believe me. You should tell this to Andre. He'll know what to do next. Huh. Okay. Let's talk about your contact mic again. Sure, contact mic. How does the thing work? I don't know. Where'd you get the mic from? Same place I got the recorder from. Back to the mic, if you will. Sure. Non-mic questions. That's it for now. Okay. Convince Suna to cooperate with the Ravers or evict her. All right. Save game. Well, let's see what uh, we've got going here. Trap near the boathouses west of the Fell Building. West of the Fell Building. West. Near the canal you cross southeast of the village. 
boat houses. Canal, okay. Sword. No. No. <coughs> Where is the boat? Where's the trap? Oh, here we go. Here's one. The reeds bend forlornly towards the sand. Some tufts have been crushed. The broken stalks seem like a rebuke. The sound of the city center hums in the east. Ah, the constant distant song. Louder on this part of the coast. Nearer, somehow. And there's that gold again. Always the gold. Reach for the trap. This trap is also full of panic locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological crypto beast inside. Another empty trap, Lieutenant takes a note. More out of habit than duty. Hmm. Say nothing, just put the trap down. Neither does the Lieutenant. He just raises his collar. It's cold out, as always. A thought. Thought complete. Fairweather T500. Remember that weakness you were looking for in this ceramic armor? Like maybe it can only stop small, fast projectiles, but a large, slow-moving pry bar would shatter it? Or if I run an electrical current through it, maybe it will melt? <coughs> or, <clears throat> personal favorite, frequency something something radio weapon? None of that would work. You need to shoot the part of the enemy that doesn't have Fairweather T-500 on it because the armor itself is invulnerable. Good news is, so are the armor pieces on you. Hmm. Plus two hand-eye coordination against enemies when I'm in FT-500 armor. Cool, cool, cool. Do I get some points? What about this one? Can I unlock it? I can. Can I study something? White morning, one guy, plus minus one authority, date of birth generator, seven hours, white morning, five hours, precarious, four, womp de womp dom center, hmm, let's do that one quick then. <coughs> hmm, okay, expect some more traps. After we save the game. Mm -hmm. I think it said where I crossed. Near where I crossed. Okay, this must be that one. So there must be another one over by boat houses, right? Over this way? No. Where's the other one? anything out here. Oh, 
Oh, drunks. Lovely. Oh, come off it. You can walk through here, can't you? Really? Jeez. That dude is coat back. Is this guy? The one in the tracksuit? Tequila Sunset. Um, I found your jacket. Ah, Tequila, I knew you'd come through. That's fucking great, man. Give him jacket. I don't know. Let me see. What? This is my jacket? My jacket was beautiful. This is fucking filthy. What am I supposed to do with this? What do you expect? You left it outside for a week. I'm not taking a disgusting pile of hogo rags. I may be in an irrecoverably decaying orbit, but I've still got some standards. Either bring it back the way it was before or find a dumpster to burn it in. Hmm. The lieutenant inspects the jacket in your hands. No. Despite the guano, it looks like the jacket itself is stain resistant. It may just need a good scrubbing. Well, I know where that lady is. Right up here. <coughs> Let's go talk to the washer lady. Our tenant, uh, the my policeman. Yes. I hope oh. the waves don't keep you up at night. Okay, I What read can that. I help you with? Could I found this jacket, but it's filthy. Could you wash it for me? I can wash it for you, she says after looking the jacket over. But it's going to take about half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Hell yeah. I could use a breather. It's been another track and field day, Lieutenant says, rubbing his thigh. Yeah, I'll wait. Alright, I'll hand it over and I'll see what I can do. Actually, I got about half an hour of training time, too. <coughs> Let's say I'm proud of this one, she nods, handing the jacket back to you. It's pretty nice underneath all that filth. I hope you take better care of it than its last owner. Goodbye, I'm off. <coughs> what does the jacket do? What am I interacting with? Library card? No. Close. Huh. Pain threshold, element proof. Half light, always hot. Drama, sweat like a pig. Okay. <laughs> Alright, well, that's not one I'm interested in wearing. Sunset. All right, here's your jacket, fresh washed. My jacket? Yeah, the one you had me clean the seagull shit off of. A look of consternation crosses the man's face. He looks at you, then at his bottle, then back at you. What the fuck are you talking about, tequila? What the fuck are you talking about? Rosemary, what the fuck is tequila talking about? Hi, that's the jacket you stole two weeks ago from the kid who was making it with his gal on the beach. That's disgusting. I've never done anything like that in my life. You're both delusional, scoffs. Found? That's a medium concept stuff. It becomes abundantly clear to you how this man managed to lose his keys, business friends, and girlfriend. I'm calling it. It's neurological. <sighs> what are we going to do? Are we going to keep it for myself, or are we going to give the damn fool thing back? Hmm. Well, I went through some... Hmm. I went through some dark shit to get this for you. Take the fucking jacket. Alrighty. You know what? Fine. Maybe I can pawn it for some booze. Yeah, you do that, butthead. 
You got any more stories? I do, but as you can see, my fuel tank is running low. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I already gave you some. I don't want to keep doing that. Then I can't keep on telling the stories. I'll be seeing you. Well, hmm. That was kind of lameish. Let's see if we can find another one of those traps. Uh, boathouses. There are boathouses down this way, I think, right? Wait, that's a closed off thing. What does this say? Shivers. A drop in temperature. An easy flow of air. An empty street. Before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps. Just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened. Across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is gray already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. Four, eighteen, twenty-one, four, one. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. And what about the bus stop? Plan number 312D. Young girls used to come here huddled up hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. And what about the road? Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It's a vital artery of flow of trade. Perception. There's one bump on the road. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away, right at the turn. A dead dog? Tragedy came from the wheels of a fast RMC vehicle hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. That is enough. Hmm, more XP. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves the curl of his hair. Okay, weird. Not really worth sure where I'm going with that. What have we got? What's next? Can I go over here? Yes. Over here? No. Both houses? There were both houses over here somewhere, right? It's over here. No. No, ah, both houses, maybe. Okay, where'd he go? This trap's not too hard to spot once you know what to look for. Keeping it hidden has not been a priority for the cryptozoologist. Look around. Behind you, the ruins of a residential building rise over the reeds, shielding from the wind. They, the reeds rustle confidentially. Reach for the trap. Nothing but locusts in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Empty as all of them, he pants. One more of these and we're done. His face is red from the cold sea air. He crouches to catch his breath. Um, bummer, it wasn't in here. 
I'm just, he breathes out, glad we haven't found some poor cat trapped in one of these. And leave. Alright, one more to check. The last one. Wait. This one? This is the last of the traps, the one Morel just set. Checking it over, he said, is just a technicality. Look around. The reeds by the abandoned campsite hiss and shake. Shivers, the later it gets, the colder. Remnants of the camp can still be seen in the sand. The fire that's gone out, you feel strange somehow. To reach for the trap. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. Look closer. No locusts. No pheasant either, but still. Look closer still. Lieutenant studies the trap with you. Well, the bait worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. Perception. The netting is a little untidy, messier than the others. Like something or... Someone or something picked up the trap and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. Um, okay. Actually, I do get the feeling that someone or something may have messed with the trap. He purses his lips. Perhaps our cryptozoologists have competition in the form of an actual, actual entomologist? Or someone else is sabotaging them? I could present more theories, but then I would be taking this on as a case, which I'm not. Hmm. Okay. Well, it probably wasn't the phasmid, but still, Morel needs to know. We did sort of promise to tell them, didn't we? Hmm. Leave. Okay. Now what? Let's see what we say. I return to Morel and whirling with the news. <coughs> Well, voice is um, <clears throat> a little on the rough side. Try to wrap up one more storyline here and then see what we're up to. Do we have anything we can wrap up? Dead body on the boardwalk. Chamrock Public Library. That has to be at the Kanima and call a station. Get the whole story from Titus. No. No. Well, that guy. And victim's body to processing. Okay. And... Uh, Kuno lied to you. Return and confront him. Oh, interesting. Okay, let's go back and talk to people at the... the whatchamacallit place. Alright. Oh, oh, went the wrong way, didn't I? Let's go this way. Why am I out of saving there? I screw something up. Alright guys, come on, sprint. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's get back to the let's get back to the whirling and rags. Connect me to Jamrock Public Library. Hold on, officer. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their librarian. Connecting the call in two, one, 
Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here, a male librarian answers the call. How can I help you, officer? I'm looking for any information that you may provide, that you can provide, on Billy Mejian, Mejian, a reader. Billy, Billy Mejian, you said. Give me a moment, I'll have to check our database. He puts down the receiver. Mm -hmm. Holding, holding music, holding, still nothing. Yes, hello, are you still there? You hear him fiddle with the printout. I found Billy Mijon's home address. Is that all right? No home phone number, unfortunately. You're probably too poor to have a phone line. Um, yes, home address is fine. Here we go, sir. Rue de Sanchez Lane, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Cape Side Apartments, it says. That's all. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? Do you have any other information on Billy Mijon? It says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. <clears throat> Do you know someone who was? Marie! He covers the phone with his hand and yells out in the room behind him. Marie! Do you remember a reader named Billy Mijan? He returned a Thibault book the other day? You hear someone answer from afar. Challenging. Maurice! What? A woman yells then. Yes, yes, okay, if it was the police. She starts explaining something. Yes, it was my colleague Marie, the librarian, is speaking into the phone again. She says that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Luz, Radio City 87, but we don't have it yet. Good, you have a name now. Hmm. Do you know the husband's name? Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Um... Can Marie describe to me how the husband looked like? Marie, a moment passes. She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he had a drink or two the last time she saw him. What was he wearing? Uh, one second. Marie turns away from the phone again and relays the question. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying attention to that. Uh, so Billy Mijon is a woman, not a man? How did your colleague know that it was her husband? Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Thank you. That's all for me. I have no other questions. Mm, happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Librarian hangs up and the call gets redirected back to the station with a soft click. Anything else you need from me? I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. You're shuffling through some papers. All right. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death. An unidentified middle-aged man. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped, fell through a hole in the boardwalk, and hit his head against the metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any sign of violence? Um, no, it seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary, she repeats. Perception. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a library card from his pockets. Any information on the library card? It's from Central Jamrock Public Library. It belongs to someone named Billy Mijan. Meiji. Mijan. That would be Jean. Me. Jean. Me. Jean. Me. Jean. I don't know. Billy Mijan. Good. You have a lead. You and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? Uh, we're taking the case. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send somebody to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Um, did you find out more about the owner of the arm armored boots? Not yet, but I was able to convince the database people to share private sector information. They promised to get back to me by tomorrow morning. Oh, that's the call I have to make tomorrow then. Okay, I'm done with the radio for now. 57th, over and out. Kupri Kima. Close the door. Hmm. Do like that car. He's having a thought. Wompty Dumpty Dom Center. Hmm. You're at home, stupid cop. Not with the art crowd. You hate them. Everyone hates them. Even they hate themselves. It's nauseating. An industry built on sprezzatura and sparkling wine. I have no idea what sprezzatura is. And let's be honest, tax evasion schemes. 
The Wompty Dompty Dom Center is the heart of this unholy symbiosis of aesthetics and tax optimization. And now that you've internalized it, you can have a piece too. Encyclopedia passives get plus 10 XP and plus 2 real, minus 2 suggestion, pretentious wanker. Alright. Gonna start taking some of these off. Encyclopedia, rhetoric, conceptualization, empathy, suggestion, and perception. What can I do? Well, nothing for right now, I guess. Kuno lied to you. Uh, I don't remember what Kuno was for. It was like empathy or something. of Rosa, a side alley of the Boogie Street Spearhead. A young man in his early 20s approaches patrol officer Emil Mullins and asks for a cigarette. As officer Mullins reaches in his coat packet for the pack of Astra he just purchased this morning, the man shoots him point blank in his chest. Breathless, the patrol officer collapses in the gutter. His right hand is grabbing the armor on his chest. The bullet didn't pierce it, but he can't breathe. On the pavement, the patter of the perpetrator's feet growing distant. Bleed, pig, someone opens the window and says, but Emil can't see who. His sight grows dim with pain. I'll be there for you, Kuno. XP. Yeah, there's the dreamy look in his eyes. Um, I talked to Manana about the armor. So, he raises his eyebrows, projecting aggressive indifference. He told me you promised to sick the pigs on him. <clears throat> yeah, so he doesn't understand. Kuno did sick the pigs on him. Kuno's a man of his word. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig, he's suddenly all business. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. Good idea. I'll remember this, Kuno. You got fucked, he repeats. You got fucked, pig. Fucked bad. Of course you're going to remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, grief in the Kuno. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. Empathy, huh? Okay, I'm off. Hold on a sec. Kuno doesn't fucking care. That was an empathy thing. If I had something else in my hand, what was it again? Let's see if I can figure it out. I think it was like the... Something. This plus one empathy gives me this. Okay. Empathy is plus one. <coughs> Bonuses from items. And empathy minus one from thoughts. Well, that's lovely. Okay, well, that just pans out as even. Let's see if I can. Do I have any points? Maybe? One? Can I do anything with empathy? Here. Uh, level up. So clothes. Okay. Now what about clothing? Anything that does empathy? Conceptualization, interfacing, savoir faire, esprit de corps, drama. New. Oh, plus one empathy. Red rogues. Uh, but plus two. Visual calculus, drama, drama, esprit de corps, suggestion, drama, perception, 
Shiver, Savoir Faire, Logic, Logic, and Drama. Hmm. Okay. No, no, and no. Okay, let's give it a try. Fuck yeah, this Kono King! 83%. Okay, give it a try. Fuck this Kono King. Oh, yeah! Check success. That's the way she rolls. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Interesting. How? Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life like she's done something. Something very bad. She came up with a psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you, even enjoys it from time to time. When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a cornered animal. She only hisses. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Act on it. Try and separate him. <coughs> Kuno. <coughs> Psst. Fuck you whispering about, he whispers back. <coughs> He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you, faggots whispering about. She put extra stress on that word, expecting it will make you uncomfortable. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's got to fucking whisper, okay? He turns back to you and hunkers down. Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Um... What's up with her? She's terrifying. Crazy scary. Crazy, he was pretensely. You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him, Kuno. Or stop talking to him. Kuno, I'm fucking warning you. You're going to get us into shit. She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see, pops his head up. Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you. Kuno talks to whoever he wants. He hunches down again. Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her so she can't read his lips. What do you mean she smoked someone? Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. C is a killer. He clearly stares at you intently. Like, actually a killer. Reception. His little green eyes are fixed on yours. Drama. He's meant everything he said before, but right now, he not only means it, he is sincere. Really? Isn't she too small to overpower someone? Are you getting this? You think I'm fucking telling you a joke here? How hard do you think it is to kill a fat ass? He pokes you in the gut. Sweet talk him, then knife him. She's probably killed a pig, too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Come on, she hasn't killed police officers. I know you pigs are too naive for this shit. Good thing Kuno's got her under control. Kuno keeps her calm. He feels eyes on the back of his head and stops. Logic. A cop would be too large for her to overpower, but he determined... But a determined child of her size can still kill the vulnerable, the elderly, the homeless, or other other children. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There's something searching in her eyes. Kuno, do you think it's possible that she's killed other children? Kuno falls silent. He does not look at you when he replies. Kuno, uh, that's, uh, that's what Kuno is starting to think. Yeah. He said that she's insane? Yeah, she's psycho. He leans in even closer. None of that kitty psycho cat burning shit. She does the real deal. What's the real deal? Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. And he doesn't want to even think about it. This isn't just another boast. What's that language she uses? Napa kimpi fagari. Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. What people? Crazy people? The fucking Nakis? I don't know. Some things are too awful to dwell on. The Nakis and Runkaris might be some kind of defense mechanism. 
Um, do you think she has anything to do with the dead man? Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Where were you? Look, Kuno's going to put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. Is she your sister? Fuck no, she's not my sister. She's just a stray who got in like a mad dog or some shit. Stray? Yeah, she was just there. He points at the apartment building behind the fence. What was that, Kuno? Little one twists her neck, looking at the building. Kuno flinches and lowers his voice even more. She was in the hallway, dripping wet by the fucking shoe rack, in the dark. Visual calculus. A shoe cupboard just off to the right? Have you been to this place? That hallway there with the janitor's closet? Yeah, that's the place. She was just balled up near the closet, psycho style. Why was she dripping wet? Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days in the corner. Every time Kuno went out. You said she got in. How? I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home and she's sleeping under the desk under a pile of clothes like a dog. What about your parents? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit, doesn't even see her there, or thinks it's fucking Kuno. He points at himself. Shit's all on Kuno. How are you dealing with all this? How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got the shit under control. He spits through the gap in his front teeth. She needs professional help. You can't do this alone. Listen, listen. He points to his eyes and yours. <coughs> C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C, you fuck with Kuno. You threaten her, you threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. Boy looks at you in the eye. Black pupils trying to focus. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later, and fuck you up. You understand? Understood, Kuno. All right, he wipes the sweat off his brow. Now we can do business. Business? Yeah, what do you want? Kuno can hook you up with... He starts, no longer whispering. Don't hook him up with shit, Kuno. See, relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno? He turns back to you. You get all kinds of shit. Kuno's going to get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno's going to get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Pig hooker. See... It's tension and release with Kuno. Now we release it. He pulls on his tracksuit trousers. The pant buying shit. That's on now too. 90% discount for Kuno's pig. Kuno can flex. Hmm. Kuno flexes for hobos. Kuno sees you're in need. He spreads his hand like a baker presenting goods. A smile spreads across his flushed face. What was that about running you an errand in illegal narcotics, Kuno? Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. His eyes bulge. Their veins reach out like tree branches. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Street's going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. Hmm. Okay. Dirty popo man is you. He nods at the building behind him. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half the speed. Who's your dad, Kuno? Kuno's dad is a fucking monster, he says proudly. He's the most violent man in Revishal. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks, too. Endurance. Are you sure you can take the most violent man in Revishal in your condition? How much material are we talking about? Like half, he says very confidently. Half of what? Baggy, but like in this vial. That's half a gram, sir. Half a gram? Yeah, the confidence is unwavering. Half a G, want it or not. But that's not very much material at all. Fuck you talking about, half a G? This shit is giant, grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. I made up my mind, Kuno, and this is what's going to happen. Okay, Kuno's listening. Hmm. Huh. I'm going in there, but not for the speed. I'm going after the most violent man in Revishal. Sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that shit back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. 
Just get in the apartment building. Kuno knows you already fucked your way in. Kuno knows everything. He aggressively points at his eyes. Go to room number 12, first floor, and kick down the door. Police violence style. Kuno style. And then, it's action time. You're locked in the room with a violent fuckhead. Hmm. That's it, he concludes. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. What the hell are you signing us up for here? Come on, Kim. Obviously, I'm not going to take it. We need to get drugs away from a minor. Okay, then, he concedes. Watch your track plans. Track pants. Huh. All right. Okay, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. That kid. Jeez. <coughs> Well, number of other activities, but it's um, been doing this for almost two hours, and my voice is just about toast. So, on that note, hopefully, um, my loyal listeners, readers, viewers have uh, enjoyed this part. Go talk to that Kuno S. No, shall not. I can do that once I get back in. I think next steps for this uh, would be to, well, there's a couple of people to confront inside. There's the cryptozoologist. There's the cryptozoologist's wife. Talk to her. Um, and send the body in for processing. Do some stuff. But it's only 3.20 in the afternoon, so I can probably like do the body for processing closer to nighttime. But for right now, I'm going to wrap it up for the day. Hope everyone enjoyed the game, and I'll talk to you all in the next stream.